Washington, D.C. The light of Lucifer is bright in your midst. You erect idols, statues, and temples that blaspheme the Most High. And as I'm writing this, I see lightning striking the obelisk outside by the White House. You have been a den of iniquity from the beginning. Because of your rejection of my word, the bread of life that I gave you, that you may build your house on me, a firm, solid foundation and the rock of your salvation, you have chosen to build your house on the sand of all that is perishing and wicked. Because my light has come to expose falsehood and you have forsaken me, my judgment will be greater for you. Share the revelation I gave in you in Namibia. So when I was a teenager, I went on a missions trip to help those in poverty in Namibia, Africa, only to discover that the poverty of North America is no better. To discover the spiritual poverty of my own heart opened my eyes to the blinding curse of materialism in my own life. And then Father says, yes, the spirit of covetousness and poverty are one and the same. I delight in giving good things, but be aware that the spirit that is at work to twist gifts into idolatry, sin, and bondage is hard at work and does not sleep. It has no power over those who abide in me and my kingdom, which is not of this world. Tell them that in order to pick up my gifts, one must put down all that is perishing and wait on me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Come and receive from me freely and drink the water of life and you will never thirst again. Ephesians 1, 3. Praise be to the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves, Jesus Christ, Yehushua HaMashiach in the Hebrew. In him we have redemption through his blood, the, forg the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. With all wisdom and understanding, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. Wow. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will in order that we who were the first to put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory and you were also included in Christ when you heard the message of truth the gospel of your salvation when you believed you were marked in him with a seal the promised Holy Spirit who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. 
that power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that is invoked, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. Wow. My daughter asked this question. Is the kingdom of God within you? The appointed time has come for the fulfillment of all things. Purify yourselves, you double-minded. Set aside every weight. Strive to enter the narrow gate of trust in my son, for many try, but few enter, because they will not forsake all to follow me. The God of this world has blinded them who are perishing. Those who love their lives will lose them, and those who lose their lives for my sake surely will find them and inherit the crown of life. My kingdom is not of this world. Only what is eternal will remain. Only what is of me will last. I am that I am. And these are the words that were given to me at an alarm that I did not set in my kitchen <laughs> that went off at 2.37 a.m. And I don't always look up numbers. Very rarely do I ever, unless the Lord prompts me to. And 2.37 in Strong's Concordance means departure. You're welcome to look it up. I'm not going to elaborate further at this point in time on that word unless the Lord um, unless the Lord tells me to and I'm going to finish uh, with Matthew 13 Matthew 12 33 a tree is known by its fruit Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good, and the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Matthew 12, 31 He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is larger than all the garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like leaven that a woman took and hid in three measures of flour till it was all leavened. All these things Jesus said to the crowds in parables. Indeed, he said nothing to them without a parable. This was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. Then he left the crowds and went into the house, and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. He answered, The one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed is the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so will it be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom 
all causes of sin and all lawbreakers and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which a man found and covered up. Then his joy, then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who, on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and gathered every kind of fish. When it was full, men drew it ashore and sat down and sorted the good into containers, but threw away the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all these things? They said to him, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. And when Jesus had finished there these parables, he went away, and coming to his hometown, he taught them in their synagogue, so that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is this is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brothers James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And are not all his sisters with us? Where then did this man get all these things? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown and in his own household. And he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Because of their unbelief. 